phone rang and automatically I sensed something was off when they said, is this Christopher Hines mother? And I'm like, yes. And they're like, you need to get here right away. And I fell to my knees and I just was like, Jesus, Jesus, take over. You see what's going on. Karen Christopher's 17-year-old son, Chris, drove his car into the path of an oncoming 18-wheeler. It took paramedics over an hour to pry him from the car. Chris was airlifted to Atlanta Medical Center where Dr. Stephanie Pinnell was waiting. My first thought was that this kid had an anoxic brain injury, which is when the brain doesn't have adequate oxygen for long periods of time. This type of injury is irreversible brain damage. So I was very concerned about what type of brain function Christopher would have if he survived this accident. By the time Chris's mother arrived, her son was in a coma. I had never experienced such gut-wrenching helplessness that I could do nothing for him. And he was in the care and the hands of, of very competent people, but he was also in the hands of, of a mighty God too. After undergoing multiple surgeries, Chris remained in a coma. Doctors were unsure of the outcome. We have seen accidents as severe as Chris's, but most of the time with those types of injuries and the extent of his accident, they either pass away shortly after the accident or never make a full recovery. My heart's cry was to save him and, and to let him live and to be 110% better. That's what I prayed. Had my hands on him most of the time. I just believe in the touch and the spirit of the Lord was there in that room a lot. In the weeks that followed, Chris showed little sign of improvement. Then, finally, 29 days after his accident, he woke up. I'll never forget the night I got a call from Christopher's nurse. She was frantic. She said that Chris was flailing in the bed, was pulling at his tubes, um, was very purposeful, and his actions was trying to get out of bed. This was the most exciting phone call I'd gotten in a while. It was so nice to hear that this 17-year-old was acting like a teenager, and it was a sign that his brain function was recovering and it was a chance he was gonna get better. It was just kinda like he snapped out of it. There had been so many days where we had seemingly backtracked and for him just to look at me and, and just recognize, it just sent a wave of hope and, and it was just, it, it was lovely. I had my son. The first time I knew he heard me and squeezed my hand, um, I told him that I was going to take care of him. Oh my goodness, look at you. How are you? I'm good. Oh my goodness. Christopher, you know, is, is my miracle boy. Amazingly, Chris has no memory of his accident. That night, I remember getting ready and going to sleep, and then a month later in April, I remember seeing my sister really hazy and fuzzy. It was at nighttime, seeing her after the accident. Could have you? already a little fuzzy too, waking up from a month now. <laughs> when you come so close to losing the nearest and dearest to your heart, life kind of takes on a, a whole new meaning and gratitude is in every breath. God is capable of anything and everything. Don't lose hope.